Hey guys, thank you for coming again. I know, you know some of you have traveled quite significantly to get here today, uh, and we really appreciate that. Um, so, I mean, yes, today is kind of like a bit of a crunch time for you. Four teams will get through to the final, you know, to battle at the gadget show for the ultimate prize of the Unreal 4 digital PC license, you know, it, which is a big deal. There's, all, you know, very few developers in, uh, around the world, even, uh, and even fewer in Europe who currently have UE4 technology. So you, even by next, uh, you know, next spring, you'll still be, you know, amongst the forefront of those developers getting their hands on it and being able to use it. Um, you know, which should be a fantastic springboard, you know, into the professional world for whichever team wins. Uh, so, using UDK will provide us with a great starting point for the game. Its many built-in features will help us to create a diverse environment. The basic features of the game, such as exploring the level, melee and range combat, will be easily accomplished. Features such as the water simulation will be used in the demo to create the swampy area. Our designer's ability to use a BSP brushes to block out and test the level will mean that production is streamlined and bottlenecks such as waiting for art assets to be completed or code snippets to be implemented will be reduced. The game will feature many non-player characters and using UDK's built-in AI will mean that the coders are freed up to focus more on tweaking this AI. Some creatures might be friendlier or more aggressive towards the player. With the designers able to lay down path notes for this AI, it means that the coders are freed up to create more diverse and believable worlds. So here we have our frog, it's running away from us, it doesn't go to sliver and it's in the trap. And now we acquire DNA sample. So the device you see uh, here is a DNA arm that will be the main tool uh, for, um, for communicating with sliver and uh, using uh, it as a hub uh, interface. Uh, we, we will use a uh, tranquilizer dart or, um, or an, uh, an extracting syringe. And here for the demo, we just faked uh, the gene acquisition system, so Sliver automatically gains uh, jump ability. And now that we have extracted the gene, Sliver can go onto the switch and open the door to finish this level. He climbs up on the ledges, attempts to make the big jump, but fails by a little bit. So he notices the flying creatures up there, Moves up to one of the birds, absorbs, and he will try to make the jump again. He climbs up to the ledges, tries to jump, and kind of flies over to get to the orb. We're now going to present to you our concept for the Make Something Unreal live competition. Our game. It's a multiplayer FPS. It is really fast-paced and engaging to the player. And we want to give every player in the team uh, a puff. Puff is short for a push or tronic force field. This is a weapon that creates a highly uh, concentrated uh, projectile of force, which gets shot fast throughout the battlefield. When it hits another player, the player gets pushed back at high speed. The player also features evolving environments and I'm going to talk to you about how we want to incorporate this into the gameplay in just a few minutes. As you can see here, here's the play field of the arena. Each team starts off at uh, one separate end of the arena and the, go and the goal for the teams is to get the ball in the center of the arena, carry it over to the other team's area and throw it through the goal post to make a score. As I said before, the game is really fast paced and adrenaline pumping and each player will get to jump high uh, across the platforms to get high up in the air and shoot at enemies. Uh, Project Genesis is set in a time where space travel has enabled a new age of exploration, so new planets um, and discovering those planets. Uh, you play a scientist, that's the Project Genesis, um, and you're sent alone to an uncharted island uh, to discover it on this new planet. Project Genesis is an experiment whereby four new genes are combined to test mutations uh, before they're tried back on Earth with humans. Now, Eugene is a third-person action-adventure game based around the main character, Eugene, which stands for Unique Genetic Extractor. He's also been enhanced through the use of epigenetics. 
This gives him the unique ability to alter the genetic structure of each of his limbs and torso individually. Now, scope was a major issue with our game, so to combat this, we reduced the possible number of states down to two, reptile and nature. And we've looked into creating our own unique cameras and the sprint, which you may have seen on the reptile dash for his utility, um, to just basically provide an interesting game. There's no better way to show this than with some gameplay. So just before this gameplay takes place, the darkness takes a hold over Aaron's mind. Uh, with this, there is a trigger that takes him into the more action-focused sequences of our game, such as the picture frame which you're about to see, clearly represented by the red of the object. And upon this, the player must uh, traverse platforms um, in a parkour style in order to escape the darkness that is chasing him. In a, in a similar way to the puzzle sections, you'll be able to find light sources within the, within the environments that you'll be able to use to stave off the darkness, but, uh, in, but you'll only be able to stave it off for a short period of time. Now, Mendel's Farm used to be a very successful and thriving business, but over time it has begun to deteriorate. As Mendel has grown older, he has started to struggle to run the business on his own. Therefore, he's hired you to help return the farm to its former glory. Now, the shop will allow the player to purchase a number of animals and plants and decorations with in-game currency that's generated from the farm. Okay, then. Now, we'll give you a quick demonstration video for what the game might look like and what the sound might appear like. And that. Polymorph is a unique third-person platformer in which your brave amorphous character and its ever-changing offspring explore the lush landscapes of Allele, um, taking on the world by taking key evolutionary traits from other species. Uh, the lush landscapes of Allele are inhabited by a multitude of tribal societies, wild creatures and dynamic elements. This is our character Axis in Engine. As you can see, he just hits a fire elemental. This enables him to break through the ice wall. This could also be achieved in a uh, number of other ways. For example, uh, he could have used the morph Rhino Horn in order to smash the ice, or alternatively, he could have used uh, the morph Leap in order to jump over the wall. So the single player of the game is you take on the side of managerial and combat. It kind of merges the two elements together, and the player will gain credits, which is the in-game currency, through playing friendly and seasoned matches. The player then, can, uh, then can, bleh, can then spend these credits on upgrades, items which have come in the managerial section, and uh, cosmetic items just to customise their character. You advance through the tiers of Mutant Rumble, which just to get up um, to around eight or ten tiers. There's four matches in each tier, and to become the champion is the aim of the single player game. Uh, so in regen, you must use stealth and wits to infiltrate and uh, locate key personnel um, that have been infected with an Omega virus. The virus has actually destabilised and reversed the human genetic code. Um, so once isolating the target, you must use your technology to eradicate the virus at a cellular level. Only then can you discover the truth and how to save humanity. So it's time to uh, <clears throat> restore and cure. So I'm really proud to present our game, Beans, which is 60% a puzzle game and 40% a platform game, mainly designed for children from 6 to 10 years old. Yeah, to 10 years old. And, but we want to make it enjoyable for a really huge uh, range of casual players. Um, uh, I have to say that in this game, the player control a creature uh, whose uh, aim is to reach the end of every level. And to do so, uh, it has to find a partner and to mate in order to make offsprings, which will inherit special abilities from the parents. And these special abilities will be necessary to overcome all the obstacles the creature will find along its path. Okay, so uh, I have been told to give a dramatic pause. <laughs> so uh, the winners, in no particular order, are as follows. Uh, so we have Dead Shark Triple Punch. Polymorph. 
Static. Yeah. And Summit. I thought overall the quality of the presentations were truly superb actually. The, um, the, the range of the science involved was really impressive and the quality of the pictures as well as the technical aspect of their design was top notch. Uh, I'm a bit overwhelmed at the moment but uh, it's going to be a fantastic opportunity. Uh, my team members are fantastic, very skilled people, can't wait to work with them. Um, I was really impressed with the, the quality of the presentations actually. The confidence in the students is really, really great. Um, and the pictures and the ideas were fantastic. Um, I think in the four finalists we've got some, a really nice diversity and fresh ideas, some really original thinking that's gone into the brief. It's very difficult to try and bake in scientific learning into the mechanic. Um, that was a challenge that was set. And, some of them have achieved that really well. So the prize for the competition is a, is a UE4 PC digital license. Um, UE4 is really only just rolling out right now, so they will be amongst the first studios and certainly amongst the first independent studios uh, in the world to get their hands on the technology. So it's a, a prize well worth looking, uh, fighting for. Yeah, I'm very excited. It's going to be so much fun. Um, I don't know what to say, actually. It's just so overwhelming. Everything's overwhelming right now. Uh, the four teams that we've chosen are you know, the best of what was already a very, very good uh, selection of teams. And the way it's worked out, you know, purely by chance, but um, you know, most excellently, is we've got four very, very different titles there. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they develop over the next five months and then, and then what the guys manage to do with them at the gadget show itself.